Hey everyone, and welcome back to GameSpot's coverage of E3 2018. I'm Lucy James, joined by Mike Mahardy. Hey. We're here on the show floor giving you all the biggest games from this year's show, including live demos, so make sure you stick with us all week. We're going to kick off today, day day two of the show proper, I guess we could call it. We're going to kick off with Call of Duty Black Ops 4. Joining us from Treyarch is Miles Leslie. Miles, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. How is your show going so far? I think it's going well. We've got a good crowd coming out. People are coming out and playing, getting pretty excited. So I think the team seeing that is getting energized as well. Just get that momentum coming out. So, I mean, the huge big change is you guys are switching up the way you're doing single player, multiplayer. Can you talk a little bit more about how single player, well, it's kind of gone. Like, how's that going to work? Absolutely. So for us at Treyarch, we've always kind of been in the business of doing non-traditional stories. It's kind of in our DNA, if going back to even World at War, Black Ops 1, Black Ops 2, Black Ops 3. It's all been about how to tell a different story. Black Ops 4 is no exception. We came in trying to tell a very different story, uh, really trying to make a social game. And what we've tried to do is like interweave the narrative throughout multiplayer and these solo missions as well that you can learn about the specialists. Zombies, you got the brand new cast as well, returning cast, a uh, lot more sort of going on there. And then on top of all that, you've got brand new Blackout as well. There's sort of a celebration, Battle Royale, really Black Ops style. Mm. And with the Battle Royale, is that like an effort to, you know, like Battle Royale games are doing well now. Was that more an effort to kind of just get in on the trend, or did you guys know you wanted to do something similar to that for a while, or what was the situation there? Yeah, I mean, we're gamers, right? And for the last year, it's like you, you play these games and you have a lot of fun, and you're always kind of talking like what if, or what's the cool idea. But I think what's really strong at Treyarch is we're all about doing the right idea that kind of does service to what we want to do. Yeah. And so we really didn't want to do anything unless we could really make it uniquely ours and really distinguish ourselves from the other Battle Royale games. So I think it crystallized earlier this year. We had this idea of really a celebration, a sandbox of really this library of the last 10 years because we have a huge library of just different content. Let's put that in. Let's let players really have a battle royale experience where you know you can drive an RCXD, you can use zombies characters, zombies weapons, old MP weapons, single player weapons. Just throw everything in that players love in a new way, uh, and it's really worked like. The problem we have now, actually, is that people are playing it too much of the studio, and that's when you know you've got something really special, so we're pretty excited about it. I was going to say, going through the catalog of Black Ops games, how do you pick and choose what to bring? Obviously, you've got the fan favorites, but are there things at the studio that you guys are like, no, we really love that bit, that bit has to come? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's really hard over the 10 years when you start looking at all the different content, there's so much, is you try to weigh in what's, what's right for the experience and the balance as well. You know, you have to, you got to give the fans what they want, but you can't really deliver it in a way where they wouldn't have fun. Uh, so that always has to get checked design-wise, and we feel like we've got a good balance. Uh, the main thing is just play test, play test, play test, uh, and iterate as, as much as possible. To backtrack to the Battle Royale quick, what is it uh, about Blackout that's setting it apart from, you know, like Fortnite, from PUBG, from other games that might like use this mode, so to speak? Yeah, for us, I mean, I think a, uh, what really distinguishes sort of Black Ops and Call of Duty is that the feel of the guns, right? That first per person gritty feel. You feel the weight of the weapons. You feel the weight of sort of using all your equipment and abilities and that connection to that weapon is for us, we think, something that's unparalleled. So we're excited to bring that into Battle Royale with Blackout. And then again, with all the different, you know, hey, people love Nuketown. Well, now you're going to experience Nuketown in a new way in Blackout. Oh, hey, you loved Raid. Here's Raid in a new way as well. We've got this legacy that really no one can compete with us on is that we're going to deliver this in a really interesting way overall. And speaking of guns, like you guys have to, are you be, will you be rebalancing them yeah. compared to like how they were in like the original Black Ops? Or absolutely, the big thing for the team was how do we take all the weapons and really deliver a new system where you're going to add more depth to it. So each of the weapons we've got now predictive recoil, and what that allows is for you to, it's, it's more skill based, is that if you want, you can learn how a gun is going to fire, and you can try to master it. Uh, and that's a huge thing for us. Uh, for the weapons as well, as each one has its own personality. We really want players to be attached to weapons and want to take that weapon and really get in arguments over weapons. Oh, hey, no, the, uh, this gun's better. No, you're wrong, this one's better. Uh, so each, each gun has its own set of attachments so that people, they want to pick that weapon. That weapon sort of personifies them. And so you've been at Treyarch, you were saying, for like 10 years now? Yeah. When you finished Black Ops 3 and then, you know, you like purportedly while Infinity Ward was working on Call of Duty and Sledgehammer working on Call of Duty and, you know, Treyarch went back to the drawing board to say, what do we want to do next? 
Uh, did you know that it would be a Black Ops again, or at what point did you know you're gonna do Black Ops 4 and it wasn't gonna be some new series in the Call of Duty franchise? Yeah, that one's a tough one because it's never like you immediately know because it, you, you already you're still supporting Black Ops 3. I mean. For us, we love supporting the community, and, and this community has really supported us. So Black Ops 3, it was really our focus was on that. And it really, you know, you don't crystallize until you start thinking about, well, okay, wh what do we start doing next? What, how can we really challenge and elevate what we've done before? And it's, the team really responds to, okay, you did that well, throw it away. <laughs> and how do you do it again, but even better? And that's when we talk about the weapons. Okay, hey, let's rebuild these. Let's break down every single component. Okay, hey, the health model. Let's redo the health model, which has never been done before in Call of Duty. Higher, you know, TTK, talk about time to kill, longer engagements, a more tactical approach to game, and really get that layering. It kind of seemed like a natural progression for us of where to take it, because we've been, you know, 10 years of Call of Duty in Black Ops that the team kind of latched onto it very easily. Like, let's, let's make these very hard <laughs> and very significant changes, because uh, it was right. Are you worried at all about reception from, you know, like a community will get used to things and they'll, they'll like things the way they are. And if you change things, sometimes it might not always be met with the excitement that you Yeah, do. absolutely. I mean, I think we're all a little nervous when you, you change something that's so fundamental, like the health stuff, for example. Right. And you kind of, is this the right call? But as soon as you play the game, you know it's the right call. And that's the main thing here at E3. And you know, when we had the reveals, we got to get the game into people's hands and get people talking about it and really evangelize it for us. Because as soon as you play the game, you know why it was the right decision. Right. And that's the main thing is that it plays differently. Uh, and it plays better in our eyes, you know, really an evolution. Uh, you're saying it's been 10 years of zombies. Yeah. Uh, what kind of celebration are we going to be expecting in Black Ops 4? Yeah, for Zombies uh, fans, we've got three brand new experiences. Day one, biggest offering we've ever had. Uh, brand new cast of characters, brand new storylines. But on top of all that, on the day one experience, is we're really trying to add a way for new players to come in, right? right. Zombies can be overwhelming because what the Zombies team and Jason Blundell do is bonkers. Uh, that's okay. Uh, but we need a, need a way to bring in new players, and that's been something that the community has talked about and we really try to pour a lot into is that with the difficulties are back, there's a way now that you can bring new players in and kind of, hey, let me show you how to do the quests, all the crazy stuff. I'm going to get you to love that stuff too. Uh, so I think Zombies fans are going to be pretty excited because each of those different levels, different experience. As far as multiplayer goes, so Black Ops 2, if my memory serves, was the introduction of Pick 10, right? And then, I don't know, like that almost, maybe you know, not perfected is the right word, but like how do you build on multiplayer after like a yearly release? <laughs> it's just, it seems like Call of Duty has figured it out. It, I imagine it must be a challenge to improve upon what isn't broken to begin with. It, it absolutely is. You're kind of in this frame of, you need to preserve that Call of Duty Black Ops feel yeah. and that sort of magic which Pick 10, how the weapons feel, but you have to absolutely push and innovate as much as possible. And the team is always taking on that challenge, like, okay, like we are talking about, weapons were good, do them better, right? And they kind of jump into that. Uh, so you talk about the pick 10 is, okay, pick 10's back, how do you make it new interesting? How do you make the choices more meaningful than they've ever been before? So you start talking about the weapons and how they're personal, you know, really personal to you, the attachments that are on them, the choices you're making from the perks to the new equipment, uh, to you know, specking in to have the specialist ability. All that adds a lot of depth and layering that we haven't had before. Let's talk a little bit about the PC release. So obviously you saw on that trailer, you guys have been working with the Overwatch team, had a little bit from Jeff, and it's going to be on the Blizzard client. Can you talk yeah. about that? We're super excited about that. So for us, about doing PC really justice is it, you know, it's not a port. Well, we've been working with uh, Beanox, really supporting us, and trying to deliver a PC experience that PC fans are really going to enjoy and love. And that's been a huge thing for us, is we've heard the community, and we're trying to push as much as possible to deliver that PC true experience uh, that, they, that they really expect, and, and they deserve. And that's what we want to give back to them. So the team is. They've done a lot, a lot of dials and knobs that PC players want. Uh, so we think they're going to be excited. And Blizzard's been really awesome about putting it on Battle.net. And you know when you get the Blizzard sort of seal of approval that it's good enough to go on Battle.net, I mean, that, that says it all on top of the Black Ops, you know. So what are you going to, if, if I'm playing on Battle.net, am I going to be able to play and like talk to my friends who may be playing Overwatch or Destiny at the same time? I'm not sure to be honest with you, okay. yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the, the PC team, they, <laughs> if I said anything that was not right, they would, they would kill me. The PC crowd would, yeah, too. That, yeah. too, yes. I am um, curious, just watching the game plan, you mentioned uh, increasing the time to kill. 
uh, when I think Call of Duty, and I think when most people think Call of Duty, you think of accessible, like, quick time to yeah. kill. Like, I could jump in. If, if this was my first time playing Call of Duty, I could jump in and kill a veteran. I'd have a chance. Increasing time to kill, did you, were you worried that you were making a game that wasn't really Call of Duty anymore? Yeah, it's interesting because it's, by actually increasing the health, what we found is you get in longer fights, which is actually good for casual fans because they're not, they're not getting kind of, you know, killed instantly. Right. They can kind of assess what's going on. They can try to get away. They can use some of the new healing or some of the equipment to heal faster, uh, slide away. So it's actually made engagements more meaningful and, and there's more thought behind it. So casual fans, and we've done user testing and play testing, is they've responded really well to, I actually can make meaningful choices. and. When I get in a fight and I lose, I don't feel like I lost because that guy was better at me with his gun. He just kind of outmaneuvered me and stayed in the fight longer or made a better decision. Uh, so we feel like it actually might help casual fans, but also has that layering that, you know, hardcore and, and loyal fans coming back. And even the pro level, there's a lot of depth there. Uh, but you, that changed. It was super scary. Yeah. You know, we did it and everyone was like, what are you doing? Yeah. Wait, whoa, whoa, don't do that. I mean, just uh, watching gameplay for yeah, like yeah. 10 seconds, I, I, you notice, I mean, between the health bar and the actual firefights, I'm like, this is actually like not a split second it's and not, it's over. Yeah, and the, the, the cool thing there is that it's more rewarding now when you get a kill and also when you survive, Yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So it's not like you were saying, I turn a corner, I'm dead. Now I turn the corner, get hit. Okay, let me try to figure out a way to get out of here. And now I feel like I survived. I feel like that badass that, you know, every player wants to be and we've kind of given them that. With all these changes, I mean, like, what do you think are the core pillars you have to bring from each Black Ops game into a new one? That's tough. You know, it's, it's like for us, it's, it's all about the weapons, right? That is the number one thing. Got to do justice to the weapon feel, really rewarding the player and what gun they've picked. And they've done, the team has done an amazing job of like, you know, you got the smoke on the barrel after it shoots and really hearing each of the mechanisms and the audio and really just making sure that you understand what this weapon is and, and why it's unique. Uh, so guns, sort of guns up and guns mentality number one. And then also the, the new is the depth. You take all these different, the content and look at the content from the, over the last 10 years and you pick and choose what's going to add to that, that sort of tactical depth that we've got so you're making more meaningful, impactful choices as you play the game. Uh, and, and you add in all that and it's just, there's a lot of layers to it now. I was also curious, I mean, with working with Infinity Ward and Sledgehammer and Treyarch, obviously the three studio rotation, um, I imagine there's friendly competition, but what are some things from like Infinity Ward or Sledgehammer specifically, maybe with World War II or something that you maybe borrowed or thought worked really well that would fit into Treyarch's work with uh, Black Ops? It, you know, it's, it's tough because we, it's definitely, it's like they're our sister studios and we want them to succeed and we'll help each other out as much as possible, like consulting, hey, come check out this new feature. But everyone's really heads down, so you're kind of in a way just going and doing your own thing because you don't have time to kind of look at their thing, if that makes sense. Uh, but you know, the war mode they did was really cool, and, and how do you do a new game mode? And that kind of inspired, hey, let's do the control and some of this other stuff is players want new experiences. Uh, so you kind of look at everywhere, you know, the other Call of Duties, other games, and how do you build upon that? Uh, it's never, it's never like, hey, let's sit down and go through all your features and see what we can take. Yeah, yeah. You're crafting your own experience. And, right. and that's the main thing. You want it to stand apart because players can, they can feel that, that it, the games feel different, and that's done on purpose. Right. Let's talk a little bit about the specialists. So who am I going to be able to play? What am I going to be able to do? Yeah, so specialists are back in a big way. Uh, they each have their own specialist you know, abilities. Their kit now is really fine-tuned to sort of give them a, a role, right? We have a saying in the studio, do your job. And it's all about the specials, do your job. So Ruin returns and his job really is about rushing in. So he's got the grapple gun so he can get in super quick and he can combo to the grab slam. And that's all for people if they want to be a rusher. So if you're, you know, you're a slayer, obviously, you're going to get like 16 0 kills. You're going to want to take Ruin and you want to get in there basically. I'm not very good maybe and so I'm going to take Crash. And Crash is brand new, and he's going to be able to heal. So I'm going to support you. So I'm going to throw down an assault pack. You're going to pick that up, and then you're going to go ham. And you're going to get me score, basically. And we're both going to benefit from us supporting each other. Right. And then if you're in a firefight getting 
getting hit, I can heal you. Right. Uh, which is a brand new thing as well. So it's all about these relationships and sort of the connectedness of the specialist that's really yeah. huge. And that's where you get the layering. I mean, in the studio, we get arguments now of like what the perfect composition of specialists is. Like, no, you got to have torque. If you don't have torque, you're doing it wrong. No, man, you need crash. No, not crash. You got to have this. And that's when you know you're doing something that is really special yeah. because everyone has their own opinion on it. And that's why we're excited when it goes out to kind of see the meta from the casual hardcore to even the pro level. Not to be, not to be reductive or anything, but it sounds like you're kind of leaning more into like being a hero-based shooter with regards to the specialist, something like Overwatch where it is teamwork makes the dream work, really. Would you say that's accurate? Yeah, we don't we don't look at it as, as a hero shooter. It's yeah. more about making sure that it's it's teamwork, right? right. It's that you can still be right. Call of Duty is all about still being. You can lone wolf if you want. Yeah. You can still be a badass. But if you team up, you're actually going to be more successful. And we're encouraging that more and more. Right. When you talk about the mini map changes with Fog of War. Now you can actually see what your teammates see around them. That's right. to encourage you to stay together, talk and communicate. And going back to the sort of the why the teamwork's important is people now when we play, it's not even, when I, if I'm yelling at you, I'm actually yelling at you to do your job. <laughs> I'm like, hey, go put that razor wire down. And it's actually forcing communication because you have a job, I got a job and we got to do that. Uh, and so the teamwork has kind of come out naturally, is that, hey, we need to do these things together if we really want to be successful. And we've crafted maps around that, right? So it's like choke points and different avenues to flank for sort of the different specialists to really encourage the unique play and the vast different play styles that we've got. Well, Miles, thank you so much for joining us. When can we get our hands on Black Ops 4? October 12th, that's when it comes out. You get everything. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, guys, make sure to stay tuned if you're watching at home, because coming up, we're going to have Overcooked 2. See you in a few.